But I want you to see the man who was talking about his assignment and message. He talked about himself first of all here. He said, Paul, what follows? A servant of Jesus Christ. Now the word servant here in the King James Version, you will not get an accurate understanding. The word doulos here. If you have the new King James Version, is anybody in the house who have the new King James Version? Huh? What does he say? A bond servant. Hallelujah. A bond servant. You need to understand because today when we say I'm a servant of God, uh, it's too generalistic, you know. Even that even comes sometimes come with glamour. But you see, what Paul was saying was a bond servant. Now, in our own time, that may not be easy to understand except you study their own culture, the Hebrew culture, so that you understand the meaning of a bond servant. I'm going to show you Exodus 21. Exodus 21 from verse 1. Now these are the judgments which thou shalt set before them. Yes, please. Next verse. If thou buy an Hebrew servant, six years he shall serve, and in the seventh he shall go out free for nothing. Next verse. If he came in by himself, he shall go out by himself. If he were married, then his wife shall go out with him. Next verse. If his master have given me a wife and she has uh, she have born him sons or daughters, the wife and her, her children shall be a masters, and he shall go out by himself. Verse 5. Now, this is where I'm going. If the servant shall plainly say, I love my master, my wife, and my children, I will not go out free. I don't want to go. I love my master. I don't want to go. Verse 6. What will happen? Verse 6. Then his master shall bring him unto the judges. He shall also bring him to the door. Or unto the doorpost. And his master shall bore his ear through with an oar. And he shall serve him forever. So, a servant is different from a bond servant. A servant still has his own will and discretion. He can choose to go out when he has served his time. The Bible makes us realize that from verses 1 to 4. He has the liberty and the seventh year he can go, the year of jubilee. But now he has the will, he has the right to go. But he chose otherwise. I love my master. I don't want to go. I don't want to become free. Then the master will say, you have made this decision consciously. It will bring him before the judges to bear witness. This man has chosen to serve me for life. I didn't force him. It is his own choice. Then it will pierce his ear. So you will see a man with a pierced ear. When he's on the street, people look at him and said, this man... Is a property of another man, and you cannot even buy him. You know they buy slave, they, they, buy, they, they could buy servant in their time, right? But this one you cannot. He must belong to that master and serve him for life. Nothing can set him free anymore. And that was a conscious decision by that man. That's the concept of the epistles. When Paul says, Paul, a bond servant of Jesus Christ. I made a conscious decision. I have the will. Now, you know we are you know we are sons in God's kingdom. When we are born again, we are sons. Okay. Now, let me explain something in one minute. When you are born again, you become a child of God. A child of God the Father. He is the Father, right? Child of God the Father. You are God's sons. Is your father. So, what about Jesus? Are you his son too? I, 
I will step on your toes. Because when you got born again, you had the liberty to say something with your mouth. And you are conscious of what you are saying. If thou shalt confess Jesus Christ as the Lord, you are not confessing that you become a son of Jesus. You confess that you become his servant. You become a child of God the Father. You come into that family, but to Jesus, you are, even though you are all brothers, is the master of the house. You become a servant to him. That's what you confessed. The reason many people's life never change is because they don't understand they have to become a servant. The meaning of that is he will be able to do anything he wants with you. He will be able to manipulate your life. He can tell you not to go to that place. He told me to resign my job in National Assembly Abuja some years ago. I go down to Elori. Even if I would do ministry, Elori should be the, the least in my heart, in my mind. My wife knows that. I've told that before. I wouldn't have even chosen Elori. He'd go up, give me a chance to choose. If I was working in Abuja before and you want me to do ministry, hey, I can remain in Abuja do ministry now. You don't decide those things. You will have to choose for you. That's why I'm saying, you see, the, the, it matters also, the container, not only the content. So, you get the right message, the, the right errand or tithing, because, first of all, you are a bond servant. It is because you are submitted to him, is your Lord and master your life. He bosses you around. He manipulates you the way you want. He tosses you anywhere you want. Wakes you up anytime you like in the night. Send you to anywhere you want you to go. And sometimes you want to go someplace, he said, don't go there. Now, Paul was saying that beyond that, I made a decision to go beyond just being a servant to become a born servant. That I made a conscious decision that I want to remain like this for life because you have the liberty to choose not to remain like that for life. Thank God, yesterday, the Bible said to us that you can decide to tell God, now, but you have already anointed me now, I can use the anointing the way I want. So you still have the liberty. Are you not listening? Are you listening to me? Do you know that when you have the gift of the Spirit, sometimes you can use it the way you want? Yeah. But as you are doing that, it will not be with eternity in view. Uh, yeah. I can decide to preach the way I like. Just find some things that will get you excited. It's still God's gift I'm using. But by the time I go to eternity and appear before him. They will put it side by side with that of Christ Jesus. And say, ah, he didn't do it like this. So he said he could not do anything by himself. You are doing this by yourself. So destroy with fire. It will pass through fire. Can you imagine many songs we compose? And on that day, destroyed. Born with fire. Many messages. Destroyed. It is not by putting a hard message on. It's not that it's making people cry. That's not the yardstick. Because you may be thinking, hey, all these things are making people happy. Hey, hey. Sometimes God may say, something, what will make you happy? It is still God. And he may say, it might, not, it might not make you happy. It is still God. So it's not about the, whether it's you feel happy, you feel bad, you cry or you laugh or jump. It doesn't matter. What matter is that this is coming from Jesus. It represents Christ and him crucified. So I want to ask you, brothers and sister, this morning or this afternoon, are you willing to become a bond servant? 
I won't ask you whether you want to become a servant. A born servant. You want to lose your will. You want to hand over your will. Jesus, being a prototype, shows us that he handed over his will. Not my will. That's what Paul is saying. 